We begin today with a case that has ignited a Texas-sized firestorm of controversy. It centres around two adorable young brothers killed in a terrible fire. Now, the case was ruled arson, and even though a man went to prison, the boy's mother was about to be dealt another cruel blow. Jason Matera has the story. Small town Hewitt, Texas. The unthinkable. Two beautiful young boys burned alive in a backyard shed. It all looked like a horrible accident. But as the days and months wore on, something else was about to emerge. What exactly happened to those precious boys behind the house on Angel Fire Drive? Joby and Jason and I were just best buddies. We loved our time together. Jason was just uh, full of energy, I had a personality that would light up the room. Joby was more serious. Very rarely did Joby and Jason ever fight. And Joby always took up for his little brother. They were best friends. Claire Bradburn is the boy's mother. Life was good. Claire was a single mother working as a teacher, trying to make ends meet. They seem to be the typical American family. That is, until that one hot summer day. What happened on that Tuesday in August? It was a typical Tuesday morning. We uh, got ready for school. The boys came in the bedroom, and we had a wonderful, strong hug. And then I was at school, and after a day of um, After a day of, of working and having meetings, the principal came into my room and said I needed to go home. There was a fire in the storage building behind the house. As Claire approached the house, it was utter chaos. I saw all the streets lined with people, emergency vehicles there already, people already with tears and had their hands up by their face, and, and I had the, this knife in my heart. When Claire got to the front door, she was informed of the unimaginable. Nine-year-old Joby and eight-year-old Jason were trapped inside the storage building. Claire's husband, Ed Graff Jr., was the one who delivered the devastating news. I immediately asked Ed, where are the boys? He said, they're gone. And I specifically said, because I am gone where? And he said, Joby and Jason are dead. When Claire met Ed Graff three years before, she was a single mom, struggling to raise Jason and Joby on her own. Ed was a pillar in the community. He worked at a local bank, very responsible. Ed treated Claire like a princess. It looked like he might be her Prince Charming. A year later, they decided to marry. Claire got pregnant after only a few months, and Ed adopted Jason and Joby. Their life seemed perfect. But Claire soon found out Ed wasn't exactly the man he pretended to be. He'd been embezzling money from the bank for 12 years and was fired for it. And with the baby on the way, their blended family started fracturing. He was very excited about this baby, but my kids were being pushed out of the picture somewhat. After the birth of their baby, Edward III, Graf took out life insurance policies on all three of their sons. $50,000 life insurance policies. In the event of accidental death, they would double. While Ed doted on his newborn son, his relationship with Joby and Jason turned. The boys' personalities changed any time Ed was around. They seemed to me like they were scared to death of him. Claire was getting scared, too. I felt like I needed to leave. Ed told me I would never take his son away. At that moment, I knew that um, this was some serious business, that, that that was a threat. A few weeks later, Claire's world changed forever. I ached my heart, my whole, you know, my, I physically hurt inside. As soon as she walked in, Ed Graff said, we've lost both boys. Now, I don't know how he knew that, because I hadn't told him that. We said that we found a body, our child, not his son. You know, we didn't say it was, we didn't know who it was. Her sons were dead, and Ed's reaction to it seemed odd. I walked in, and I saw Ed first, and I tried to hug him. And I said, I am so, so sorry. 
He said, it, it's okay. He said, things do happen, which was very unusual. And Ed's explanation of what happened left more questions than answers. Ed said he was inside the house during the fire, changing the baby's diaper. He didn't hear the people beating on the front door. That same terrible night, so Claire wouldn't have to look at the charred remains of the shed, the volunteer firefighters had it loaded up and taken away to the local dump. The fire was ruled accidental, but a mother's intuition was not to be ignored. I knew he was behind it in some way. A fire in the storage tool shed in Hewitt late this afternoon claimed the lives of two brothers, age eight and nine. Days after the funeral, Claire and her family were suspicious. They went to talk to McLennan County District Attorney Vic Fazell, hoping to convince him to investigate the fire that killed the boys. Investigate he did, and by the end of it, Vic knew what he had in front of him. We had a long list, maybe 20 things enough to convince me that Ed Graff was a murderer of these two children. And coming up, accusations, accelerants, and a firestorm of circumstantial evidence. So why wasn't the case against Ed Graff a slam dunk?